Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Jordan Reviews It. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back to once more review it. What is it, you might ask? Well, very recently, Kendrick Lamar did the pop-out show in California and brought out so many different neighborhoods. It was great for the culture, ladies and gentlemen. He was representing. He was representing for the culture. On Juneteenth, ladies and gentlemen, we got to give Kendrick Lamar a hand. It was a great way to cap off the beef between him and Drake just based on the fact that, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand that the core essence and purpose of the beat of the beef between Kendrick Lamar and Drake was to draw a line in the sand and to allow you all to understand the distinction between real hip hop and industry plant behavior. I think it's true. Listen, if you don't understand what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't understand what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, go back and listen, listen to it. What we were addressing primarily was the cultural currency of Drake. That is what became the crux of the entire argument. How legitimate is the music you're making? How great are you exactly? Because culturally you are illegitimate relative to the meaning, purpose, and backing of hip-hop, rap, and what have you. And so quite honestly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it was great for the culture. We got a lot of discourse on both sides. The Drake hate is continuing. The fans are representing hard. Uh, some can just, they some just can't admit defeat. I totally understand. Drake fans, it's okay to enjoy Drake's music. It's okay. No one's blaming you for enjoying his music. But as it relates to the rap beef between Drake and Kendrick Lamar, Drake got his ass handed to him. Lyrically, musically, I mean, Not Like Us is the song of the summer. It's the song of the year. It might just be the song for a very long time. And the more time we give it, the more iconic it's becoming. Now, I'm also aware of the discourse of certain musicologists, music theorists, what theorists, whatever, breaking down lyrics even now, months after or a month after the release, the release. And some are adding to it saying that, oh, when he said this, he was talking about listen, I appreciate the dialogue. It is uh the further burying of, in my opinion, an industry plant. Um, but some of this shit, I think you give Kendrick Lamar too much credit for. <laughs> I don't think he actually intended everything you're saying he intended. Um, and maybe he is, and that just makes him even greater of an artist. And I wouldn't put it past him. I just wouldn't put it past him for it to be the case. But I just, all right. I think, I just think we're at the point where it's like, okay, let's just enjoy the music. Like enough with the, the deep conspiracy theory about the song itself. It's a good song. Let's just listen to it. It's personally not my favorite of the rap beef songs. And, at, and quite frankly, it's getting a little annoying how people are just hopping onto it. Another thing I want to highlight is again, um, shout out to the cultural impact that Kendrick Lamar can have and just music in general has on a group of people. But I think we got to dial it back a little bit and allow individuals to understand the meaning behind not like us. It's being played in so many different environments by people of all different cultural backgrounds that people aren't really understanding what he's talking about. I mean, there's direct verbiage on the song indicating the direction of not like us. And while it can be this universal statement for a multitude of things, the purpose and origin behind the song was uh, highlighting the cultural illegitimacy of his uh, opposition being Drake. And so when he says not like us, what he's saying is he's not of the culture. He's not of our culture. Right. And so as a lot of different people play this song in a lot of different settings, 
I, I just hope they identify the hypocrisy behind being a white person and playing not like us, because literally you're you're rejoicing to something with the use of black music. That's literally saying that you are not like us. Right. And I think that brings us to our next point, uh, because certain things out there, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's been a lot of cultural conversations about hip hop. It's been a lot of cultural conversations about rap in general, ladies and gentlemen. And, and this brings us to my, my, my first real conversation of the day, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about the origins of hip hop. And there's a lot of perspective about it. And we'll dive deeper. We'll dive much, much deeper, ladies and gentlemen. But we heard some sentiments uh, from certain rap artists related to hip hop. Uh, its origin and who has say in the conversation of influence and what influenced the culture of hip hop in and of itself, ladies and gentlemen. And this, let's just hear from a certain individual's perspective, which from what I understand, uh, some people actually have the care to give a fuck about. So here we go. Racial stuff going on with the Kendrick Lamar, they not like us, because he did a big, uh, you know, the concert and there wasn't really no Latinos there, but there was OGZ. Now, afterwards, um, they kicked it with Lefty Gunplay, Lefty Gunplay went and kicked it with a bunch of them. Um, and I seen a couple other Latino artists, they kicked it with them as well. But what I do want to say is a lot of people leave this out and they think that hip hop and rap was just created 100% by blacks. That is not true. Hip hop and rap was created 50-50 with Latinos and blacks. Look it up. Look up the information and look it up, okay? One of the first rap groups ever had a Latino in it. DJ Disco Wiz was Latino and he was part of the first rap groups, okay? African Bambada, you know, the Zulu Nation, yeah. It was blacks and Latinos that was in the Zulu nation. Goofies. The Bronx. The Bronx is mostly Latinos and blacks. They came together collectively and they created hip hop. Okay. You can look it up online. All of the. All right. I'm. 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 Ah, oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. Let's put this into perspective with a, sim uh, a metaphor, maybe a. Uh assertion of some form of figurative language to allow you to understand how uh, phallic this is, how false this is, how uh, unlegitimate or illegitimate this is. Ladies and gentlemen, saying Latinos deserve credit for the creation of hip hop is like saying white people or Southern whites deserve credit for the creation of soul food. While you were there, it did not come from you. It is not of your origin. And to put it into better perspective, we have to also understand the projects were a community of housing, which, which, were, which was made up of minorities and people of color. So yes, while there were some Latinos there, Let's also in, in, include the fact that um, post Black Panther Party movement, 70s into the 80s, uh, there were mass groups of Latinos that acknowledged their Afrocentristic origins. Right. And if you if you really dissect the verbiage of that particular conversation that, that gentleman had, you were making a delineation between Latinos and blacks. As if we're two totally different people who just cohabitated with one another and created something as a collective. Right. And, you know, I, I and I think that's an important analysis as well, because, you know, much of Southern Central Central America, the Caribbean and the United States is made up of ancestry from Africa by way of the enslavement of African people. Right. But in today's context, just based on the racial weaponization of different groups of people and the, the, the systematic racial pyramid of people understanding that anything but black is better. So I'm going to call myself or denote myself under anything that gets me to the proximity of whiteness, i.e. the bluest eye, that being denoting myself under my ethnicity over my racial origin, 
right? That makes me a, a better person in terms of rep representation in today's society. So that's another facet of what, what we're faced with. So we kind of got to think backwards and unlearn some of the, per, or unlearn or peel back some of the layers of the verbiage here. Um, and then to, to add on top of that, you literally just said that there were Latinos that joined the Zulu nation. Is the Zulu nation culturally uh, the Mesoamerican? No, right? You all were just there and were a part of the d developing culture, which was led by a community, which at mass was black people. So while you were there, you do not get to have the credit of saying you were 50 50 in its creation. Furthermore, again, when we have a conversation about the creation of hip hop versus the influences of hip hop in its or in the origin of rap, we have to understand that industrially rap and hip hop was not what it was in the cool Herc era. Right. We have to understand the first element of hip hop that was developed was the break was lit, which was literally taking a section of a song and basically um, uh, uh, looping it uh, and people dancing to that loop. Right. That loop created a a funk, a jazz, a hip, something for people to dance to. Right. And there were MCs, basically people who controlled the vibe of the party right they they were the speaker who at times would rhyme and rap and spit poetic slurs over top of those breaks which over over time in the popularity of these parties created rap right or, or this industry of rap right but let's talk about where that rhythm where that soul where that uh, uh hipness came from that 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 rhyming came from right it came from poetry right we got guys like gil scott heron uh the watts poets even as far back as some early jazz soul and in uh, uh southern music which incorporated poetry rap and even breaking dancing in groups and ciphers and things like that that comes from us as or our culture as african descendants right and, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I did it all here with saying that if Latinos are 50, 50 in attribution to the creation of hip hop, then why isn't it prevalent in your Latino culture today? Why is it that the only aspects of what is hip hop is only existent within black communities and communities that seek to adapt that black culture, Right. So again, I, I, I understand that everybody wants to show up to the party and be recognized, but I want under every people, everybody to understand that when black people are recognized, everyone is recognized. But when everyone else is recognized, black people are not. Because of the struggle we've gone through in this country, because of the things that we're faced with just being black in this country. And it's very real. It's a very real element. It's history. It's a part of the fabric of being here in the United States. I just don't like it when people like to assert themselves in proximity to our culture for the purpose of being attractive or being popular. Right. And then as soon as something real happens. Right. Right. You're nowhere to be found. It's the old saying that goes, everybody want to be black, but everybody don't want to be black. Right. So it's, it's just it's a very real element in being black. And it, it goes into the conversation of we need we as black people needing to understand the not necessarily gatekeeping, but the cultivation of culture, uh, the safekeeping of our culture. Right. And understanding that if you're not going to step into the realm of our culture with respect, you don't deserve the recognition to do it. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Right. With this artist Ian, Right. And even with some 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 black artists who create degenerative music, which is supported by industries. Because, quite frankly, the industry would rather keep us down and lift us up with positive music. Which is why you have to give your kudos to Drake. And this brings us to the next topic when we talk about slain, slain rappers. Julio Fulio, 
right, down in um, Florida, right? There's a lot going on with gang culture and music, right? And they're, and these guys are signed to record labels, and they're, they're prompted to make this type of music for the purpose of attraction and selling records. But in all honesty, right, a person can stand in the room and say, yes, create that because people, people are going to like that. But they don't have to deal with the ramifications of what that art does to a group of people and what it perpetuates. We do. Right. Because as a black man, I feel for my other black men. I'm a part of it. It's our collective consciousness. It's our collective spirit. It's the ether that flows throughout us all. We all are in representation of one another and we have to represent well and we have to care for one another. That's the only way we get better. And we can't create degenerative negative music that perpetuates violence and negativity in our community if we want to get better. It stops now. It has to. Right. And these other individuals can hop into it and do what they want to do with it. But if we don't approve of it, they're not getting nowhere. They're not going nowhere and they ain't doing nothing. And they know that. Which brings me to exhibit A, which I hate the most, the culture vulture. Let's start with Post Malone, because many of you can relate to that. Post Malone got on with a black adjacent song. And what I mean by that, it was a song that appealed to an audience of black listeners at a time where you're just like, OK, White Iverson, this guy drops a nice melodic song. That we can enjoy. At first you're making hip hop. At first you're using black producers. To appeal to the black audience. But then later on in your career. You realize that okay. White people accept me now. Truthfully understanding that white people. Are going to listen to you. To, to their ears fall off. Because you're a white person making black music. And they can enjoy it better because you're white. And then you transition into full on country. Still using these melodic uh, 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 tones and, and, and cadences from rap music, which does not come from you. Understanding that a lot of your music was written for you early in your career. You had a lot of black people in the room to help you make some of those good songs. And some of your best songs have other black artists on them. And that's what I call culture vulture, eating off of our culture for your success. As soon as you get us to, to amplify you, you jump over to your own people and, 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 and make money off, off of that. But if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't be where you were. If it wasn't for this culture that you assimilated to, you wouldn't be nothing. And that, my friend, is why we need to safeguard the culture. We can't allow anything. If it don't bring a, bring a benefit to us, then why do it? I hate the fact that the reality is that years to come, there will be white rappers doing the things that we do that get more recognition than we do when we do it. And we're the ones who are the backbone for their success. How can we accept that? And not that it's so much about black and white. It's more about the fact that when we do it, we don't get the sponsorship. We don't get the credit. We don't get the... The, 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 the support and the put on the way they do. And we know why that is. So we got to support us. We got to safeguard the culture. It's not okay for us to just like anything just because it sounds appealing. We really got to dissect it and understand what is this in proximity to the ramifications or the progression of my culture. What is this? Because rap music is us. It comes from us. It is in our origin. It comes from our origin of black, of, 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 of as for Afrocentric, Afrocentric origin. And then another facet of this conversation, which I really hate that even black people are joining in on relative to the white supremacist tact of divide and conquer. We are constantly having this debate between the different types of black people. There is no different type of black people. Black is literally a term that connects us as melaninated people throughout the diaspora of the African descendant, whether voluntary or involuntary. Right. Jamaicans are black. West Africans are black. Southern Southern Africans of African descent are black. Migrants of Europe 
who are African descendants are black. It is literally a term that refers us to our culture, which connects us all throughout the voluntary and involuntary diaspora. Black is not a term synonymous with the United States black person or African or African descendant. It is not. That is the elitist white supremacist in, 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 in a embedded sense of menticide within us as United States of America into thinking that we are the centerpiece of all blackness, which we are not. It is a collective uh, 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 engagement as it relates to the advancement of black culture. And we cannot employ the tact of divide and conquer as if it means something for our benefit because it simply does not. Foundational black American, African descendants of slaves, those of you who like to separate yourself from your African uh, brothers and sisters across the globe. It makes no sense for us to do that. Right. The Asian American born here of Asian immigrants does not separate himself from from the individuals who are in Asia. They are as much Asian American as those individuals are. Being that some of them may not speak the culture, some of the X, Y, but if they walk, if they go there and they exist there, they're not looked at as foreign to that which they descend from. And neither should we, our brothers and sisters of our of our culture. We are connected through this collective consciousness, this collective ether, this collective spirit of Afrocentricity, which descends from our ancestors. We all have the same cultural origins. We are we all have this sense of innovation and creativity and, and cultural richness, no matter where we go, whether it be in the food, the style, the art, the verbal expression. It's it's within us because it's what we come from. Regardless of what has been employed to try and keep us down, we all share that struggle, regardless of how overt or uh, subliminal it is. We, it is all shared that slavery was a worldwide thing. Slavery of the African was known and recognized by the world. It not only impacted us from the standpoint of enslavement, it impacted the continent of Africa in terms of colonization. All right. So it's just like we can't continue to separate ourselves from one another. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jordan Reviews It. Slight type episode today, nothing major. I just, you know, wanted to address some things. I hope you enjoy the episode. I'm talking about a lot I know. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, i catch you all next time, man. Thanks for listening. <laughs> You've been great. <laughs> it's all ogre now. Peace.